Good morning and welcome to The Point. We're so grateful for the opportunity to be together, whether you're in the room or online. Hey, thanks for joining us. And if you're joining us for the first time, we want to extend a special welcome. It can be a little intimidating to check out a new church, so thanks for being here. Whether you walked through our doors or are tuning in from home, would you let us know you're here by texting the word hello to 812-359-1799. When you do that, we'll make a donation to a local food bank here in Seymour as a way of thanking you for joining us. So welcome. We're glad you're here. Now, for those of you who are new around here, whether it's one week or a bunch of weeks, we want to invite you to take the next step to find out more about The Point by attending Starting Point. Starting Point happens monthly on the third Sunday of the month, immediately following both the 9.30 and 11 o'clock services in room 109. That's on your right as you exit the worship center. This 20-minute Get to Know Us Better session will give you a brief intro to the church and give you a chance to get answers to most of your questions. If you have kids in Point Kids, know that they will be well cared for during this short info session following the service. Just hop on the Point app or the church website at gotothepoint.com under Connect Next Steps to Register. We can't wait to meet you. As you know, Oktoberfest is just around the corner on October 4 through 7. Each year, The Point sponsors an ice and water booth to sell bottled water to patrons and keep the vendors stocked with ice during those long, hot days. But our booth doesn't simply keep water and ice in the hands of people here in Seymour. It also helps to bring clean and lasting water to some of the most vulnerable kids around the globe who don't have any access to clean water. 40 runners and walkers joined the Point's Team World Vision team this year to train for and complete the Indianapolis Monumental Full or Half Marathon on October 28th. They are each working hard to raise funds to help bring clean water and the fullness of life to kids who need to just be kids. 100% of the Oktoberfest proceeds goes toward the team goal of raising $200,000, which brings clean water to 4,000 people for life. And get this, they're already halfway to their goal. Now this event doesn't just happen. It combines the efforts of well over 100 volunteers each year to make this incredible serving opportunity a success. Would you be willing to jump in and work the booth for a few hours one day in order to be part of this life-changing team? Sign-ups begin today. You can sign up on the church website at gotothepoint.com or on the Point app under Serve Reach. Or if you're on site, you can sign up at the registration kiosk in the lobby. If you're up for a little hard work and a lot of fun, grab one of those time slots and corral some of your friends to join in with you. Speaking of doing your part, we are incredibly grateful for the generosity of this body of people who, through faithful giving, keep the ministry going here week in and week out. There are a few different ways you can give to The Point. You can text The Point Give to 888-364-4483 on your mobile device. You can give on our website at gotothepoint.com you can mail a check to 311 Meyer Street here in Seymour. Or if you're in the room, you can put your gift in one of the black boxes on the back wall of the worship center as you exit. Thanks so much for being a vital part of all that goes on in, outside, and around the point. This morning, as we do each week, we're gonna get on our feet and sing together. We do this at the start of our services each week, not to fill time or to warm up for the sermon ahead, but to speak truth and life and victory over where we've been and where we're going as individuals and as a church. It's a gift we get and a gift we give to the Lord and to each other. So let's stand up and get to it. we 
good morning church we come to lift him up to give him praise today come on salvation one doorway that needs to lie one redemption and one confession i believe in the name of jesus christ hey, sing it with a strip. i believe i believe in the crucifixion and by his blood i have been set free oh i believe Resurrection, hallelujah, his life, it stands to be. All praise to God the Father, all praise to Christ the Son, all praise to the Holy Spirit.
space we could ever breathe Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe We live for you yeah. Jesus, the name above every other name You are Jesus, the only one who could ever stay
morning, everybody. Yes, man, I'm so excited. We're starting a two-week conversation uh, today. Uh, This week is Family Matters. Next week, we got something new and exciting coming called Family Experience. We're going to talk about it in a little bit, but we are just pumped and excited as a church, as a community of faith, to lean into what it means to say Family Matters. Uh, We believe that here at The Point, and we want you to know that we all together as a community of faith exist to partner together to not only pursue God's kingdom in the world in our own individual lives, but to raise up a next generation, your kids, our young families, the future of the church, the future of the kingdom, and family matters here at The Point. Uh, I love family. I love my family. If you haven't met my family, you should. They're pretty great. I have three daughters, in fact, uh, Morgan, my oldest, Marley, and Mackenzie. Here's a picture um, of them. Uh, this is, <laughs> so this is Mackenzie. Um, I'm, a, I'm a wonderful father. Uh, I have great parents skills and techniques. I'm going to share my vast expanse of par- parenting knowledge with you today. This is a photo that we took of Mackenzie. Now notice she fell on her bike. Um, we were training, teaching her how to, how to ride her bike. And the thing about this story is, is uh, that's me there taking a picture. <laughs> I did check if she was okay after I took the picture. <laughs> Parenting tip number one, always take a picture of something really funny that happens. Your kid's okay. They'll be fine. So this is Mackenzie face down. My, then my girls thought they would pose for an even better picture. Here's the next one. <laughs> I said, girls, everybody lay down on the ground like you all wrecked together and let's take another. I love, I just love how they're all posed on the ground. I think we took chalk out and made chalk outlines around them that day. <laughs> Here's uh, Morgan, my youngest, and Marley, my middle. Um, they're not that young now. They're actually old. Morgan right now here, she's at college right now. Oh my gosh, what has happened to my life? Uh, so if you notice in this picture, Morgan seems really happy and in control of the situation. Do you know anything about Marley there in the picture? <laughs> she's like, dear God, somebody please save me <laughs> from the grips of my younger sister. Morgan, she's a wonderful, amazing kid, but I remember one time uh, Heather was just helping her with something. And Morgan has always been kind of a take control kind of person. And Heather was like arguing with her a little bit. I think she was like three or something. Heather was arguing with her and she says, listen, she kind of jokingly said it. She said, it's my way or the highway. And Morgan looked up at her and said, mommy, it's my highway. (laughs) I said, oh oh my goodness. I think in that moment, I realized raising girls, raising kids in general, the, the reality of this truth, parenting is hard. Anybody else been with me? Maybe you've raised children. Maybe you are currently raising children now. The truth is, parenting is hard. And a lot of times when we face like the tension that comes, when we experience something hard in life, is we have multiple responses. But the truth is, when something's hard, we want to lean in because usually if it's hard, it matters. Right? If something's difficult, it's worth doing, I believe, in life. And, and here's the truth of it, because what's at stake with your kids? And this is what we really want to zero in on in this whole next two weeks of family matters and why it matters for us to, to lean in and raise our children together, toward, to point them towards Jesus, to partner together, is because their future flourishing is at stake. Your, your role in your kid's life matters more than anything else. And here's the deal. If you are not a parent today, maybe you're a grandparent. Maybe you're an aunt. Maybe you're a single person here at the church today. Guess what? You are not off the hook. Did you know that? Because it takes more than just parents to raise a child. Uh, you've heard that old saying, it takes a village to raise a child, right? That, that comes from somewhere. We're going to talk about the truth of that today. Because I love this about God's word. Sometimes it's really confusing. Anybody ever open God's word and go, what the heck does that mean? Anybody? I, I do that all the time. And I'm a pastor. I like went to school to read the Bible. It's hard. But there are some things in the Bible that you open up and God says, I'm going to make it real plain for you, Right? And here is one of them that I love. In Proverbs chapter 22, verse 6, it says this about why it matters to raise our children. God gives us this this profound responsibility. He says, start children off on the way they should go. And even when they are old, they were not turned from it. Or train your children up in the way that they should go is another translation. This is a command given not just to parents, but given to the community of faith to train your children up in the way that they should go. It made me instantly think of of a deeply profound biblical example in Star Wars. (laughs) 
This is the way. Any Mandalorian fans out there? Yes, I love it. I'm a nerd. There we go. It, this is the way. God says, if you want to know how to raise your children, know this. It's your job to train them up in the way that they should go. Yet there is something going on, I think, in parenting in general. And this has been happening for a long, long time. Because we think we're, we're doing the things that we should be doing. But oftentimes, as we think we're doing the things we should be doing, we're not really doing anything. This profoundly wise man said this quote one time, if you're not leading them somewhere, you're leading them nowhere. <laughs> That's me, I said that. <laughs> I'm the wise man today. If you're not leading your kids somewhere, you're, you're leading them nowhere. And what I mean by that is if, if you don't have an intentional knowledge that you are raising your children up the way they should go towards a destination, then you're not really doing anything. And our deep challenge today is the reality that if you're, and this is scary right here, can I, can I lay something on you? Because if you're not leading your children or we're not leading our children together collectively as the body of Christ somewhere, we believe pointing them towards Christ, then we're leading them nowhere. The real scary truth is that the world around them will happily lead them where it wants them to go. The world, the enemy, you fill in the blank. But there, there are forces around us, all around us, in culture, in the world, deep forces that are opposing the flourishing of our souls that will happily lead your children in a way other than the way they should go. And here's the truth of it. The world presses in and is all the time trying to tell your child little subtle messages about the way your child should go. And oftentimes it feels really good. And if they don't simultaneously have parents and a community surrounding them, pointing them the way they should go, they're going to go some other way. And oftentimes, if the world is directing our children, it's going to lead them this way. Here's a few things that I kind of see as influences in my life and in my kids' life. First one is, the world will lead them to a me-centric existence. You ever feel that in your own life? All around us with your job, with your finances, resources, friends, they're all pressing us in, oftentimes very subtly, to believe that the world revolves around who? Me. My wants, my needs, my preferences, how I wanna spend my time, how I wanna do my stuff. And it is in us from a very young age. Parents of young ones, have you seen this jumping up inside of their little hearts? <laughs> they want the world to be about who? Them, me. Me-centric influence in the world. The world will happily lead your children away from God's way of flourishing towards a me-centric way of life. It also leads us to a me-centric life becomes a me-serving life. That all the decisions I make around my me-centric universe are all motivated by getting the stuff that I want that will make my life better, that will do me good. It's a toxic way of living. It leads us down a pathway of life that is not flourishing, that is the farthest thing away from flourishing. And eventually, the most toxic, I believe, influence in the world, it will lead us to a way of me glorifying. That if I'm the center of my universe and everything surrounds me and it's what I want in the world, then everybody should know how wonderful and great that I am. And when the world tells me all of a sudden that I'm not the greatest, then all of a sudden I'm at conflicting relational odds with others around me because I want this truth to be true. That I am the most important thing, me glorifying. And in that world, God ceases to exist a little by little by little. And God wants to lead us in today to, to train our children up in the way that they should go. And you thought this was hard, right? So the world will happily lead your child somewhere, right? If you're not leading them where they should go. Here's an even deeper challenge for you as parents, aunts, uncles, single people, church community together. Is that as we lead our children, if we don't know the way ourselves, how will we ever expect to lead our children? If we don't know the way ourselves, how will we ever expect to lead our children? What is the way? The Mandalorian makes a play and this is the way. It seems like super abstract. I jump back to the Star Wars knowledge again. The deep wisdom of the Mandalorian. This is the way. Do you know the way? Do you? What is the way your children should go? 
And man, we, we make this a complex conversation. We, we want to teach them this and lead them in that. And I think many of us get so overwhelmed with the, the responsibility of, of trying to form our children and, and point them in the way that they should go that many of us just kind of cast aside our responsibility towards the school or we leave it to the church or the Sunday school teachers or the pastor or whoever else. We give over our responsibility because we are overwhelmed with even knowing what the way is. But if you don't know the way that your children should go, how are you going to lead them yourself? And again, the Bible to the rescue today, God's word, the living word to the rescue. Because God's will is oftentimes, we make it confusing, right? What is God's will uh, for my life? I don't know, I can't tell you how many people I sit down with and counsel and we talk and it's all centered around, centered around that question, what is, what's God's will? What does he want me to do? What, what's the way to my best life? And we make it so complex. But did you know that in God's word, it says specifically what his will is? Actually, in the book of Ephesians, we're going to read it today. The apostle Paul lays a plan for us because he knows as humans, we like to make things confusing. So if you don't know the way you should go and you want to find out so that you can lead your children the way they should go, here's your answer. So at this point in the message, if you can find a pen or it's on your little app, go to the point app, this is one thing that you should take with you. If you ever want to know what the will of God is for your life, here it is. I'm going to give it to you plain. Praise be to God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. This is the Apostle Paul speaking to the Ephesian church. For he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. In love, he predestined us for adoption to sonship, lots of theological stuff there, through Jesus Christ in accordance with his good pleasure and will to the praise of his glorious grace, which he freely has given us in the one he loves. In him, we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins in accordance with the riches of God's grace that he lavished on us. All kinds of great stuff there, but here it is. What is the will? With all wisdom and understanding... He, God, made known to us the what? The mystery of his will. Here we go. You're going to get the mystery of God's will in a sentence. According to his good pleasure, which he proposed in Christ. So his will is shown to us in Christ. Here it is. To be put into effects when the times reach their fulfillment. Here's his will. To bring unity to all things in heaven and on earth under Christ. Amen. Let's pray. You can go home. <laughs> the will of God is to bring unity to him and with us, with one another. We find our wholeness, our whole self, to love God with everything that we are, we find in Christ. That is God's will for your life, that you would be with him and he would be with you, that your children would discover a life that is consumed with the love and presence of God. And we try to make God's will about all kinds of things, but really in the end, it's really simple. The message says it this way. I love maybe just a little another, another version. How blessed is God and what a blessing is he. He's the father of our master, Jesus Christ, and take us, takes us to high places of blessing in him. Long before he laid down earth's foundations, he had us in mind, had settled on us as the focus of his love to be made whole and holy by his love. Start to see these words of the intention of God is to bring you to your wholest self, your best life. Long ago, he decided this, to adopt us into this family through Jesus. What pleasure he took in planning this. He wanted us to enter into the celebration of his lavish gift giving by the hand of his beloved son. Because of the sacrifice of the Messiah, his blood poured out on the altar of the cross. We're a free people, free of penalties and punishments chalked up by all our misdeeds and not just barely free either, abundantly free. He thought of everything, provided for everything we could possibly need, letting us in on the plans he took such delight in making. He set it all out before us in Jesus. He shows us the way to go, a long-range plan in which everything would be brought together together and summed up in him. Everything in deepest heaven, everything on the planet earth. See, this is the way to be one with and whole in God. See, see and, and we, again, we make his will so confusing and complex. What, what should I do about this decision? What, what things should I do with my life? How should I decide to go tomorrow to this thing? And all, all around we go, and really in the end, God says simply, come and be one with and whole in me. And the same is true. If this is the way, then this is also the way that you should lead your children. 
You know what? We do a lot of teaching them about the Bible or teaching them about this or that, really, but how much of our intention is centered around, focused on the reality that telling our children, look, God wants you to be with him and to find your best life in him and fostering and encouraging a relationship with God that they see in reflection of you because you know the way, because we as a church know the way. I wonder what our kids' lives would look like if we shifted our focus and started revealing to them what it meant for our lives to seek Jesus as the one who makes me whole. And they see my life caught up in him. I wonder how it would change the way that we show our children the way to go if they see it in us. And we are desperately focused on this as a church. We want to help and come alongside and partner with you in your relationship with your kids that together we might point our children, the next generation, towards Jesus. We might point them towards a life of wholeness and fullness in God. And and here's the thing, we don't wanna just say that that's important to us. Right? We don't want to just say we're doing something without actually doing it. Remember, if you're not leading them somewhere, you're leading them where? That's right. That means we have to have an intentional plan to help come alongside you as parents so that you have tools to partner together and say, here's the way, kids. Here's the way, my children, to go towards Jesus, to be one with him, to be whole in him, to find your best life in him. And that intentional tool you have in your hands today, it's called Faith Phases. Our family ministry team has been working hard for months developing this plan to, so that you have something tangible in your hands to say, how can I lead my child towards wholeness and fullness in Christ? All throughout, from birth till they graduate high school, here are some steps that will help you have the tools and resources to lead your children the way that they should go. We have a a nice little video I want you to to see here real quick about the point faith phases, this tool that will help partner with you in your parenting journey. Let's watch this. At The Point, we want to partner with parents to prioritize their family spiritual growth. As a ministry, we only have about 40 hours per year to invest in kids and students, but parents have about 3,000 hours per year. That is why we created Faith Phases. Faith Phases is a plan that provides focus, structure, and clear next steps to help families point their kids to Jesus. It includes key milestones at each phase of a child's development and intentional experiences planned for parents and children to learn and grow spiritually and relationally. In a world that pulls us in many different directions, our desire is that Faith Phases is a resource helping families point their kids to Jesus and doing what He did loving God with everything. We want you to be able to point your children to a life of loving God with everything. And because that is where God is leading us today. That is the way that we should go. And again, I come here at this point almost every sermon, I think, could it be that simple? (laughs) For, For your life and for mine, for our own spiritual journeys, could it be that simple to point our children towards a life of loving God with everything that they are? And that when God is at the center, all of a sudden it begins to change the trajectory of their life, the decisions they make, the things they decide to do with their life, all changes when God is at the center of their life, when they love God with everything, just like their parents do. And faith phases is a journey to help you all throughout. And I'm going to just kind of walk you through this. You have a little uh, document that you got or a little pamphlet that you got um, that you can take with you that has all of this information on. But we want to take them through several different phases of life to partner with you all as parents. The first is embracing faith from birth to pre-cool, pre-cool, pretty cool, preschool, can't speak this morning, but embracing faith. I was just having a conversation uh, this past week about this reality. Actually, Pastor Tim and I were talking about this, that I was raised in a family uh, where I came like out of the womb a Christ follower. <laughs> and it seems kind of weird, you know, and I, I hear this all the time. There's a sentiment, I, I think, in our culture that we, we are, and maybe it comes from our painful experiences with church in the past, but we so desperately want our kids to make their own choice. We don't want them to feel like forced to have our faith. But the truth is, when we, when we live in that sort of mindset, we are really stepping outside of God's biblical mandate for raising up a family towards Christ. It is a good thing. It is a godly thing. It is his plan for your children to be surrounded with the presence of Jesus. Did you know that? 
That, and, and Pastor Tim and I were talking about this. Both of our journeys, I, I don't really have a recollection of a salvation moment in my life where I went, oh, wow, I wasn't living with Jesus, and now I am living with Jesus, and my, like, my whole life was changed. My spiritual upbringing was Jesus was my center, and I saw it in my parents, and I saw it in my aunt and uncle, and I saw it in my pastor, and I saw it in my grandma and grandpa, and I saw it in my cousins. Jesus was our center. It was the way of life. You see what I'm saying? And as God calls us to this this period of raising our kids, specifically in embracing faith, we need to know and be set free from the, the presence of the enemy, I believe, in our lives that convinces us, no, stay disconnected from your child's faith journey because you have to preserve their ability to choose on their own. Friends, influence does not determine their choice. Influence directs their choice, guides their choice. Imagine your life without influence of others. If everybody had said, we're going to be hands off because we want you to make your own choices. We believe that's the best way for life. Does that sound like the best way? Influence directs and guides. It doesn't, just, it doesn't determine. That your children need this situation in life to embrace faith. And during this phase of life, we have uh, placed in front of parents, parent dedication. And you might say, that's a little strange. Usually in church, there's baby dedications. We come up and we all smile at the beautiful babies and we hold them. And I loved it as a pastor. I love to hold babies. I love to hold them up like, you know, what's that Lion King? We have the Kuna Matata. La, 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 this baby to the Lord, you know. It's wonderful. I love that stuff. But I love the intention here at the point when I came and I said, what's this parent dedication thing all about? And really it's leaning in to elevate the importance of this moment of faith. To say, yes, we want to dedicate our children. We want to say, God, this child is yours. But God enters in and says, no, I have given this child for you to steward their life. And as parents, this moment is a pivotal moment where we can come before the Lord, hold one another accountable and say, we are going to live our lives in the way of Jesus. We commit to living our lives in the way of Jesus so that our child will see Jesus through us. Step one, embracing faith, that your child might be brought up in that faith. Discovering faith. This is a wonderful time. Our kids begin to grow. And in this moment of discovering faith, we hope that through them seeing the way of Jesus in you and us together collectively, that they will trust in Jesus. And they will learn what it means to proclaim him as theirs. That he and them are one. Remember, what's the will of God? To be one with God and one another. That they will discover that Jesus has been pursuing their life and they are caught up in him to love him with everything. And then the seeking sexual integrity class is a part of this journey. To learn who they are. To learn who God says they are. And then the affirming faith stage. This is middle school when kids get real interesting. I don't know if you, I'm looking at middle schoolers now. Like, you all are interesting. <laughs> middle school phase. You're, you're thriving in middle school class. This is a season of change and transition where parents are wondering, what the heck has happened to me and my life? And children are wondering, what the heck has happened to my parents? They're weird, right? This happens in middle school. And we want to come and help them learn what does it mean to thrive as they discover who they are and affirm the faith that they built in this discovering time. And lastly, and most sad for parents like me, <laughs> mobilizing faith. This is high school and graduation, where they have a preparing for the next chapter class and senior send-off. And I have a kid in college. I have a senior in high school. I have a freshman in high school, all moving towards this phase of life where I'm beginning now to see them go and decide, like, how is God going to use them? And I'm seeing the fruits of my community of faith living and influencing their life, and now they've discovered who Jesus is, and he is awakened in their eyes and their hearts and their minds of what he wants to use them for in life. And I see them loving God with everything. And that's what it's all about, church, to come to the end and say, God, look what you've done. You have helped me raise my child, steward this upbringing of my child's life to love you with everything, that their life is caught up in wholeness and fullness with you. They know the way. And then what happens? It's like rinse and repeat, isn't it? <laughs> if your child knows the way, what will they teach their children? And on and on, God calls us to raise our kids together as the body of Christ. And ultimately, here's the truth that we want to lay upon you, because this faith-based thing seems awesome, right? And I think it's wonderful. But many of us then make this final mistake that it's the church's job to teach my children the way. And I just want to tell you, it is not the church's job. 
It is the church's job to partner with you as parents to lead your children in the way they should go. To partner, not do. Because what happens at home, let me just tell you, matters more than the hour we have with them here at church. And we want to help, equip, stir up, partner with you as parents, grandparents, aunts, uncles, teenagers, single people, that we can come alongside one another and show our children the way they should go. But your influence, your direct, hour after hour, all those marbles in the jar, time that you have with your kids, every moment matters. And your moments matter more than the one hour every Sunday that they have here at church. And let me just press in and challenge and encourage you to imagine what your kid's life would look like, will look like, if you said today, God, I commit first to knowing the way. Do you know the way? Are you finding your best whole life in Jesus? Is, is your life me-centric? Is your life me-serving? Is your life me glorifying? If it is, then those are like giant red flags to say you are not living the way. <laughs> and maybe your first step today to raising your children the way they should go is for you to commit and say, you know what? I gotta find the way first so that I can show my children this Jesus who has changed everything for me. And maybe you as a parent today need the challenge to say, imagine what your kid's life would look like if you said, today I will begin leading my child the way they should go. I'm gonna engage with faith phases. I'm gonna influence my kids. I'm not gonna let the world determine who they are and what they, what they think about life and the things that they'll choose. I'm gonna raise my child up in the way that they should go in partnership as the church surrounds together. And we're gonna raise up the next generation. And then imagine, church, as God says, I desire that none should perish, that I would come and make all things new. Imagine, imagine a world where the next generation continues in this passionate, life-giving fire that God has come to change the world. And he's gonna do it through your kids and my kids and their kids, and God's kingdom will come here in Seymour, here in Indiana, here in America, here around the globe, as it is in heaven. That's the desire of God today, that he would show us how to love him with everything. Let's pray. Heavenly Father God, I pray now just as we worship, that you would just stir our hearts, all of us here today, that we would just attune our ears, we'd, we'd change our, our posture towards you, God, and say, Lord, challenge, convict, lead, guide. You've shown us your will, God, and that's to be whole in you to be one with you. And I pray for the one sitting here today that knows, deep down they know, God, they're not, they're not going the way they should go. They don't know the way. Lord, might they have an encounter with your living spirit today that might change everything. I pray that they would commit to begin journeying towards you, to lay down their life, to say, God, I don't, I don't know any other step, but right now to say, God, I'm yours. Show me the way how to be whole. I pray that you would lead someone here today in that journey. And for every parent and every single person, and every teenager, every aunt, every uncle, every grandparent, that you would stir our hearts to take seriously your command to train up the next generation, to train our children in the way that they should go, that we might point them to you, Jesus, and they might live their life and love you with everything. Do your work now, God, that only you can do. Set us free, change us, make us new. We pray this in Jesus' name, amen.
faces proud and scorn What heights of love, what depths of peace When fears are stilled, when striving cease My comforter, my all in all Here in the love of Christ I stand Let's 
to us this morning by our pastor amen what an incredible challenge to us as a church to us as parents as grandparents as aunt and uncles i'll tell you what man folks told me that when they went to school it would go fast they said it'll fly i remember my grandma telling me she said joel those little kids get in school and it will zoom by before you know it And this morning as Pastor John was speaking, we got a senior in our house. We have months left with him under our roof full time, months. 
we're in that process where we're we're looking at schools you all have been there or are going to be there and we're talking about the future and and those kind of things but it settled in on me in the midst of all of those conversations am i reminding him yet again we can do all this stuff we can get all these degrees we I love it. I love it that he's smart. I love it that he works hard. I love it that he does all this stuff. But when all is said and done, if the will of God for us is the way that that Pastor John said this morning, the main thing is, son, is your life built on Jesus Christ? It's all that matters. It's all that matters. And every decision is every decision you're making. As you look to your future and all these important things flowing out of the decision that He is on the throne of your heart and of your life. And boy, I sat there this morning and just asked myself the question, who's on the throne of your life today and in these moments right now, Joel? Who's on the throne? (laughs) May it be Him. In our lives as a church, May it be about him that we can show them, that we can show them the way and that they themselves, man, the thought, I was getting all stirred up, man. She began to talk about the, our future generation of our kids living out their faith and being able to watch that and see that and watch them become world changers as Jesus Christ uses them in their hearts and in their lives and to be able to see that and to be able to experience that. Man, that's that's what I want. It's what I desire for my family, for Beck and I, for our kids. And I know that's what you desire for yours. And so let's lean in to all that Pastor Tim and Kelly have for our kids. Let's lean in to all that there is for us as adults to draw closer, to make him the main thing, that he might be at the center of all that we are as we raise these kiddos to love and to know him. Next week's going to be good, y'all. It's going to get a little bit crazy in here. Is that all right? It's going to get a little bit. We're going to do some things next week that that might be a little bit uncommon in this adult worship center. And I think that's all right. That's going to be good. Uh, Next week is, is FX service, and that's where kids bring their parents to church. And so we're going to have a good time in this place as kids are joining us and we're intentionally encountering the family, the whole family, everybody together. So my encouragement next week, um, a little bit, uh, we, we want you to take one of these and there's probably some neighborhood kids or there's a family in your neighborhood or, or that would be a great Sunday to expose them to the point. To let them know, you know what, we, we value kids around this place and, and we want to we want to lean into your family and we want to meet them where they are. And so there's a, just a small little invite that, that you could hand somebody. You could give a, a, a single mom you see out with kids and, and she's looked like she's just about to lose her ever loving mind. And just say, hey, come sit with me next week. Bring your kids and they can be loud in church and they can not stay in their seats in church. And it might get a little crazy in church and it's all right, bring them. This is a great way to invite in on the back. It says, meet me at the point be a great way just to engage with some family. So we want you to take those before you leave this place. Make sure if you didn't get a Faith Phases uh, brochure, you get one of those as well. But next week's gonna be fun as we um, are in FX. And then this Friday night, mark your calendars, don't forget, there is a worship event right here in this place on Friday night uh, with Columbus Collective. And so we're gonna be posting through social media and all of that. Don't don't forget that. Mark your calendars for Saturday evening. Columbus Collective right here in this place for an incredible night of worship. Go in grace and in peace and in the love of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ today. Thank you for worshiping with us, church.